the successes and failures in the classroom will increasingly shape the fortunes of countries. And yet more of the same education is only going to produce more of the same strengths and weaknesses. The kinds of things that are easiest to teach and test are also the things that are easiest to digitize, automate, outsource. In today's schools, students typically learn individually. And at the end of the school year, <clears throat> we certify their individual achievements. But the more interdependent the world becomes, the more it needs great collaborators and orchestrators. As you at Nesta know more than anyone, innovation is now rarely the product of people walking in isolation. Instead, it's an outcome of how we mobilize, share and integrate knowledge. These days, schools also need to become better at preparing students to live and work in a world in which most people will need to collaborate with people from different cultures and appreciate a range of ideas and perspectives. So are schools living up to this? To find out, PISA carried out the world's first global assessment of collaborative problem-solving skills, where we ask students to interact dynamically with digital agents. As you would expect, students with stronger reading or math skills also tend to be better at collaborative problem solving simply because managing and interpreting information and complex reasoning are always required to solve problems. And the same holds across countries. Top performing countries in PISA like Japan, like Korea and Singapore and Asia, like Estonia or Finland in Europe or Canada in North America, they also come up well in the PISA assessment of collaborative problem solving. But you know, individual cognitive skills explain less than two thirds of the variation in student performance on the PISA collaborative problem solving scale. And there are countries where students do, do so much better in collaborative problem solving than you would predict from their performance in science, reading or math. For example, Japanese students do very well in those subjects, but they do even better in collaborative problem solving. To some extent, that also holds for the UK. The UK ranks 11th in collaborative problem solving, much higher than in math, science or reading. Well, in contrast, Chinese students do very well in math and science, but just average in their collaborative skills. But it gets more interesting. When PISA assessed individual problem solving skills in 2012, boys scored higher in most countries. But in the 2015 assessment of collaborative problem-solving skills, girls outperform boys in every country. In the UK, this gender gap amounts to 34 points, one of the largest among countries. And that's mirrored in students' attitudes towards collaboration. Girls show much more positive attitudes towards relationships, meaning that they tend to be more interested in others' opinion and want others to succeed. Boys, on the other hand, are more likely to see the instrumental benefits of teamwork and how collaboration can help them work more effectively and efficiently. Also, the classroom environment relates to those attitudes. PISA asks students how often they engage in communication-intensive activities, such as explaining their ideas in science class, spending time in the laboratory doing practical experiments, or arguing about science questions. And those activities all relate to positive attitudes towards collaboration. So there's much that teachers can do to facilitate a climate that is conducive to collaboration. Students who have more positive interactions with their peers also score higher in collaborative problem solving. And that's true even after taking into account socioeconomic factors. In contrast, students who said their teachers said something insulting to them in front of others performed lower on the test. It's interesting that disadvantaged students see the value of teamwork often more clearly than their privileged peers. They tend to report more often that teamwork improves their own efficiency, that they prefer working as part of a team to working alone, and that they think teams make better decisions than individuals. So schools that build on those attitudes by designing collaborative learning environments could engage disadvantaged students in very new ways. 
Interestingly, the data also show that exposure to diversity in the classroom tends to be associated with better collaboration skills. And of course, education doesn't end at the school gate when it comes to helping students develop their social skills. It's striking that only a fifth of the performance variation in collaborative problem solving actually lies between schools in the UK, much less than is the case in the academic disciplines. So for a start, parents need to play their part. For example, students score much higher in the collaborative problem-solving assessment when their parents said that they were interested in their child's school activities. What happens outside school? Using the internet, playing video games, meeting friends or walking in the household can also have a social or sometimes antisocial component. PISA shows that students who play video games score much lower than students who do not play video games. And that gap remains even after considering social and economic factors, as well as performance in reading, science, and math. But accessing the internet, chatting, or social networking actually tends to be associated with better collaborative problem-solving performance, all other things being equal. So in sum, in a world that places a growing premium on social skills, a lot more needs to be done to foster those skills, far more systemically across the school curriculum. Strong academic skills won't automatically lead to strong social skills. Part of the answer lies in giving students more ownership over their time, the place, the past, the pace, and the interactions of their learning. Another part of the answer lies in fostering more positive relationships at school and designing learning environments that benefit collaborative problem-solving skills and positive attitudes towards collaboration. Schools can do so much to identify students who are socially isolated, organize social activities to foster constructive relationships and school attachment, provide better teacher training on classroom management, and adopt a whole-of-school approach to address bullying. But part of the answer lies with parents and societies at large. It takes collaboration across a community to develop better skills for better lives.